SAE Musikmesse 2011 hier in Frankfurt am Main am SAE Stand. Willkommen zum SAE Expert Talk. Ich habe heute hier uh, Ricky Lawson. Ich habe mir eine Liste hier geschrieben. Der Mann hat sage und schreibe 100 Millionen Alben eingespielt. Er spielte für Phil Collins, Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder, Whitney Houston, Al Jarreau, George Benson, Lionel Richie, Bad Midler, Quincy Jones, Steely Dan. Er hat sogar einen Grammy bekommen. Er spielte für Rod Stewart, Sheila E., Foreplay, Aretha Franklin. Er hat Mariah Carey, Cliff Richard, Randy Crawford, Babyface, Beyoncé, Stevie Wonder, Paul McCartney und vieles mehr eingespielt. Ich glaube über 500 Platten. Welcome to SAE. Ah, danke schön, danke schön. I have a first nice question. Have you been drumming all your life or did you some serious job before? Excuse me for this question. Well, I started playing drums basically at the age of 15, 15 and a half. Um, I had a real job once uh, where I had to punch a clock for about 110 days and I got hurt and so you can only stay on medical for 110 days. So I was receiving a check for $80 a week at home, but I was playing in a club at night making $100 for the weekend. So I was getting 180 bucks staying at my mom's house. So I only had a real job really once in my life. Everything else has just been music. Yeah. Music your whole life? Well, starting at the age of 16 playing drums. So 15, 16. Yeah. I saw your website. Unbelievable. Fantastic. How many records did you play on? You know this? I have no idea, but um, some of the ones that I played on um, that I most remember is uh, playing on I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston. Everybody knows the song. Um, Anita Baker's Rapture album. Um, all the records that I did with the Yellow Jackets. And of course, the Shades album, which was the album that I uh, composed the song. And it won uh, for the Yellow Jackets the best R&B instrumental. Mm -hmm. So I won a Grammy Award. Cool, compliments. Great, great, great. It's a blessing. You work with Phil Collins. Yes. How is it to work with another famous drummer like him? What, what, oh. Phil Collins is one of the nicest men um, in the business. He's a very smart man, um, a lot of fun to be around, um, but he's an excellent drummer. I actually prefer to hear him play drums than play piano or sing and he sings very well and plays very well but I being a drummer I want to hear him play um, and he plays great but what happens he makes more money singing so of course you got to go and uh, but he's a wonderful man I really miss him a lot and I always pray for him that he stays healthy and, and keeps making great great music did you play with him together Yes, yeah. Um, there's a video that we did called Phil Collins Live in Paris. And of course, there's a portion in the show where the drums, uh, we do a kind of drum battle, drum solo together. And uh, we added also Mr. Luis Conti on percussion. So it just took it to a whole nother kind of level with Luis there. And it was great. Um, um, but, yeah. you know. You have to look this on DVD. Yeah, yeah? you have to see it, yeah. yeah. Phil Collins live in Paris. What are your expect expectations of a, a recording engineer in a studio? To know his job. Yeah. <laughs> But we, you know, as a E, there are a lot of recording engineers and yes. maybe they have to know what they have to do. Yeah, exactly. Well, normally if I go to a recording studio, uh, normally it takes me about maybe an hour and maybe 15 minutes to get a drum sound with a great engineer because they just know what to do quickly um, and in the studio time is money so um, I really need him to really know his job because it makes my job easier because I have to hear and if I can't hear then I can't play my best I'm gonna play but I won't play my best and I've done some recording sessions where I really had a lot to deal with um, but got through it You know, it wasn't my best session. I mean, it was one of my best sessions, but for the for the overall, because we all played together, it was kind of rough. What is the best studio or the, the, the your favorite studio where, where you work? I mean, expect uh, 301 in Cologne, my studio, oh, you know. Fantastic. Yeah. I must come there. Yeah, you have to come. recording session. Yeah. Do I have an invitation? 
Yes. You sure? Yeah. After this, we can go okay. straight away. Okay, you. Ha uh, I'm ready. I, my bags are packed. Okay, we go. <laughs> <laughs> you have a studio? Um, very great studios that you well, I, prefer? I, I live in Los Angeles, so there's studios everywhere. Um, and some of the great, great studios is Capitol Records, mm -hmm. um, Village Recorders. Um, George Duke has a wonderful uh, studio. Um, Babyface has an incredible studio. Um, I have my own recording studio that's pretty good. Okay. And we've ever been able to turn out some really good projects. Um, I have a, um, a Christmas album that we did uh, two Christmases ago called Ricky Lawson's Christmas, Christmas with Friends. Mm -hmm. And so you're not my friend, so you have to get it. And then um, I have a record coming out called Ricky Lawson, uh, Not Then and Now. And also we have a single from that record called Love Will Bring Us Back Around, which is um, one of the singles that we're using to help raise money for the relief effort for Japan. Japan I saw it on your website. Yeah. Yes, and uh, we're trying to be as supportive as we possibly can uh, to help the Japanese people get back up on their feet. Ricky, you worked with a lot of famous producers. Do they every time exactly what they want? Or, or um, do you have your own freedom on some records like Whitney Houston or is it very clear what you have to play? Um, it goes kind of a little bit both ways. Sometimes they have designated things that they want me to play and sometimes they just say play what you feel. Um, I did Gerald Albright's last album and it was nominated for a Grammy and he just sent me the tracks and he had a rough idea of what he wanted on each track. Um, so I just took what he had and took it to the next level being a real player because it was programmed drums. And it was okay. It wasn't bad. They could have got away with it. But it just, the, the, the real acoustic drums and really uh, a, a real player just took it to another kind of level. Yes. So The song becomes a new soul, yes. a new, a new, an heart. Own, yeah, yeah. A new heart. Yeah, exactly. How, how do you adapt your own style into a commercial production that is um, made for radio? Um, well, a lot of times the guys will hire me, um, you know, because they say I play good time. And really, that's my job is to play good time as a drummer. Mm. You know, else they could pat their foot. They don't need us. But, um, you know, try to be a team player, be on time. And that doesn't mean if the session starts at 10 o'clock, you get there at 10. You got to get there at 9. No, actually 8.30 because at 9 you're getting drum sounds so that you can be ready to play at 10. Yeah. You know? And, um, you know, just being a good team player, being on time, and being able to give the people what they want, you know, in the least amount of time. Ricky, is there a new equipment that gives you inspiration for new sounds or new style or something? Something new that you say that is really great, that gives me new inspirations? Well, I've been working with the uh, Spectrosonics company, and they have some wonderful new toys. Um, working with uh, the company that handles uh, Ivory, which is the acoustic piano program. And, um, you know, when you hear some of the sounds that they come up with, it inspires you to play, you know, different things, Latin jazz, funk, or whatever. Um, but there's some wonderful stuff out there from Korg. They have some great stuff, the M3. Um, and so I just, or a lot of times I'll be listening to the radio and hear a melody or hear um, a drum groove, and that inspires me to do something. So ha by me having my own facility, it makes it very, very easy to get in and make some things happen. How do you handle dynamics in the studio or in a live situation? Do you play very straight or? Um, dynamics meaning volume dynamics? Yeah, volume dynamics. Well, oh yeah, I mean it depends. Sometimes uh, if a tune has to get very quiet, sometimes you can play it on the cymbals, you know, or whatever. Or you can just stop playing and time still goes on, even if you stop. Mm -hmm. But some people feel they always have to be playing something because they, they will lose the time. But I've been blessed and played enough to where I can literally stop playing, and I still feel the time within my soul. So, you know. your your own clock inside, yes, your own internal clock. Yeah. Do you have a secret tip for us? Um, not a secret one, but 
one that you know I try to stand on is to just practice all the time and a lot of times practicing is not physically playing a lot of times practicing is listening to other musicians so when you get a chance to play with other musicians you already are in 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 sync because you've been listening um, you practice listening to other musicians and not really into yourself as much and um, it really helps so when you hear other musicians you get inspired by what they play to play what you play what is the funniest things that happened to you in the studio do okay, you, in the studio? you can pr tell this to us oh my god in the studio oh, on a live situation also Woo. well um, well the funniest thing I don't know if I should tell you though because I don't want to get out of no nope. Nobody hears it, uh, I'm thinking. Nobody? Uh, maybe three or four or five okay. thousand. Okay, since I like you, I'll, I'll tell you. But don't you tell, I'll send my cousin over to... Uh-oh. Um, I played with Michael Jackson at the Super Bowl. And at the rehearsal, I had drumsticks. But at the actual performance, someone lost my drumsticks. No. So I didn't have any drumsticks. Not really. No, and they say Michael Jackson. He said, psh, psh, "Ow, Michael Jackson!" Psh, psh, psh. And he popped out of the thing, you know, out of the floor. Boom! And I still didn't have any drumsticks, so I just played with my hands, like, you know, really. Forty million people, no drumsticks. Unbelievable. But I did it. My hands were like potatoes when I finished because they swole up. They got very large. And um, but that was one of the funniest things I've had happen. So that means, whatever happens, you have to do the job. Yes, you have to work it out. You have to work it out one way or the other. You got to get it done. One last question, Ricky. Uh, do you have a word of advice for our young musicians? Um, be passionate about the things that you're doing all through your life. Um, if you're passionate about your music, if you like music, be passionate about it. If you like sports be passionate about it and you'll get more out of it because you put more in you know if you if you're dating someone be passionate about it you know get into it I mean don't get crazy with it but get into it and you will get more out of it and it's such a blessing um, to be a musician and especially um, through the period in which I came um, I'll be let me see I'm 56 now And I'll be 57 years old this year. Yeah, but no drinking, no smoking. But just, you know, go for your dreams and don't let anybody take them from you. I think otherwise it is not possible to do all these records and work with all these people. You have to be very straight. And blessed. And I am truly blessed. Thank you. Ricky Lawson, thank you. A lot of success for you. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye. Ciao.